right as the dog starts barking. Okay, so welcome to day three of this workshop. This is a workshop, if you're just joining in for the first time, I know people have been enrolling yesterday and even today. So this may be your first time and you're gonna catch the replays of day one and day two. But this workshop is all about the impact of our life experiences, especially when we've had wounding that has caused us to think and believe about ourselves a certain way, see the world in a certain way, and then how that impacts our quality of life, our health, our relationships, when we feel burned out, when we feel stressed. And tonight we're gonna to talk about the spirituality aspect of that and how my framework and perspective of spirituality. So before we dive in, who I am is Linda Downey. I am a functional health practitioner, been in health and wellness my entire adult career and really working in this area for the last several years, specifically with women because of my own challenges, my own health challenges, my own traumatic childhood, actually, um, as I came through my journey and learned more and more about it and learned how what I was experiencing in my 40s was a result of what I experienced when I was three and five and not knowing that and not connecting that and always searching, like a feeling of always searching for why isn't it working? Why does everything seem so hard? Why, why do I try to do the best I can and yet I still don't feel well? or whatever, however your thoughts go. Those were how some of my thoughts went. And so I just continued to you know, enroll in courses and to learn. And so that's what this workshop is about. And every month, if you're new to my world, I do a free workshop every month that's interactive like this. I do a lot of regular live things um, that are posted everywhere, but I like to do something interactive and to give you some tools. So. That's what this is for this month. And then I also want to extend an opportunity if you feel like you want to go deeper or this really speaks to you and the way that I work makes sense to you, um, that there's an opportunity to enroll in working with me. And we can, I'll share a little bit more about that before we finish up. And um, that's always an opportunity. But when, when I do the workshops, I really like to make a point of it because I'm really targeting some specific things so that you get a sense of what it is that uh, we do in the work together and with the women who decide to do this kind of work. So that's who I am. That's what this workshop is. And a quick recap, we talked about trauma and the definition of that, again, from my perspective and my training is a wound that is still painful that still um, causes a reaction when it's touched, an emotional wound. And it also has changed in some way, shape or form the way that you think about yourself and your world and the world in general, that's trauma. So, and that's really that definition. I want you to keep that in mind because as we go into spirituality, you'll, I really see the connection of like, who we are when we're born as a spirit and how that gets changed and shaped based on the things that happen to us and then how we create our beliefs. So the traumas, and they could be big, major, significant things or not so big, just really what, what are oftentimes very normal life situations, but um, it just depends on who that person is, how they experience it, what emotions come up when that experience happens, and then how that changes the thinking. Hi, Devry. Hi. So, um, so um, yeah, keep that in mind when we get into the spirituality part. So that's what we talked about on the first night was really defining that, what the wounding is, and that there's also a, a block in growth in some way when that wounding happens, just like if you wounded yourself on your leg or your arm, it would change the growth. There might be a scar, um, but it would in some way change the tissue, right? So the same thing happens, it changes our growth. And here's the key for tonight's conversation. It changes our spiritual growth. When I define my perspective of spiritual, I think you'll see that connection. So we talked about that and how it then, those wounds, I call them core wounding, I don't call them, 
they're called core wounding because they are at the basis of when we develop and when we're learning. So they're like, you know, what, what your core is. It's the thing that really holds everything else up. And they, they form core beliefs. So the core wounds will form the core beliefs. And the core beliefs are the beliefs you have about yourself that are inherent. They're subconscious. So they're in the background. It's not something that you're consciously necessarily thinking about, but they're the beliefs that you hold and you hold them in your subconscious. So I want to define subconscious a little bit too when we when we get into it. So if I forget, remind me, but because um, that's important to really understand. So we talked about that and those core beliefs, how then you live your life from your core beliefs. And those are your beliefs about yourself, who you are, maybe life itself, right? Like is the universe, is the world nurturing and loving and giving, or is the world scary and, and threatening and I have to stay in survival all the time? That's like a core belief, right? How you're going to see the world or people or yourself. Uh, am I someone who can go out and make my life happen or it's not going to happen for me? I'm not good enough to have those things like that. So those are some of the beliefs that get shaped and then they drive all of your choices and your decisions. And we looked at the choices specifically that keep us like tired and overwhelmed, not, not wanting to say no to people. That's just a really easy one, a really basic one to see, like not wanting to say no because of a background belief about yourself. If I say no, it means I'm selfish. If I say no, it means um, people won't love me. If I say no, it means that things won't work out for everyone or their needs are more important than mine. It's so, it was so interesting because having nothing to do with this workshop, I have a client in another capacity, not, um, not doing this work. And she was sharing with me this morning that she just treated a friend for her birthday. And she was going on and on about how this friend never ever receives, will not receive anything, never does anything for herself. And she wanted to treat, and this friend's like in her probably late sixties, wanted to treat her. She's never had her hair done her entire life. She just holds her hair up and cuts it herself and she wanted to treat her for her birthday and the friend was like well okay okay I'll go like she had the conversation I really wanted let's do a spa day it'll be fun and her friend was like okay that does sound like fun but I'm going to give you the money for it and she was like no you're missing the point it's your birthday I want to give this to you she could not receive so of course this workshop going on these three days in my head I'm listening to the story like wow what kind of wounding went on for her you know in my head I didn't share that but that's what I was thinking because here she is out in the world never ever allowing something for herself and the sadness that's there the disconnect from self and joy that's there and just the efforting of life Okay, so that's what we talked about. And then last night, we really connected that more to health. I have sent out um, an email. So if you didn't get it, look in your spam folder, because I put some resources there if you're interested in reading more. Um, and I actually forgot to put on there as well, um, Anatomy of an Illness, Anatomy of an Illness by Carolyn Miss, M-Y-S-S. That's a book that really correlates um, different illnesses connected to emotions really for to just sum it up. So anatomy of an illness is great. Like she would say, um, let me think of an example, breast cancer, women who get breast cancer, yes, there may be a genetic predisposition, but what's gonna turn that marker on, if you remember from last night and Dr. Bruce Lipton's cellular biology is a woman who doesn't, express her heart there's pain and a lack of open-heartedness which will contribute to the gene of breast cancer being turned on so that's just one example that i kind of remember i read that book a long time ago but she does a lot of um correlating and she is a doctor so that might be another resource that i forgot to put on the email okay so that brings us up to speed to tonight and we're going to talk about spirituality 
so my definition, the framework that I'm looking through spirituality is, is our innate, innate connection to source, to God, that we are all part of God's energy. That's where we came from. That is our true navigation. That is our true guidance system. And when we are connecting and developing our, our spirituality, we get more and more connected back to source. And when we have a lot of wounding, it pulls us away from source. And we'll talk about why that happens. So spirituality too, to me, well, these are some qualities. An inherent peacefulness, just having a sense of peace internally, regardless of what's going on around you. The drama of other people, the drama in the world, like politics and the news, the drama um, in your relationships, but being able to feel a centered sense of peace regardless of that, like sort of not buying in and not engaging with it, but also without judgment. Because a lot of times, here's the, dif here's the distinction I wanna make. We can be like, okay, I'm not gonna engage, but I'm doing that because if I do engage, it's gonna mess me up. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, I'm not engaged because I don't need to engage. I'm not engaged because I'm not getting sucked into with my judgments about it. Oh, they should be doing this. Or they I'm just, I'm not going to judge. I'm just going to be in my own centeredness. So a peacefulness like that, if I explain that well. Um, also a wisdom, a wisdom that comes from that source wisdom that we all have. Um, and the ability to transcend the fearfulness of our thoughts. So as human beings, we have a lot of thoughts, a lot of thoughts. And the ego is really what drives a lot of our thoughts. The ego is the part of our mind that's made to keep us safe. Oh, you better not do that. That's not going to work out for you. Stay over here. No, no, no. Don't, don't go there. No, don't try to get a new relationship. You got hurt the last five times. You better not do it again. Whatever it is, that's the ego. And it's the ego's job to keep us safe. But the ego is also going to keep us really small. And it's also going to keep us fearful. So when you, we develop our spirituality, we learn how to transcend that egoic fearfulness and trust beyond what we can hear in our own head. Does that make sense? Okay. So from my perspective, well, this is really the perspective of quantum physics, which has been now the accepted model for actually marrying spirituality and science. There's, as, as beings, we have a lot of dimensions. So I just want you to hear this from wherever you're at right now in your life. And if it's different than what you've heard before, just chew on a little bit, just like look and see how it sounds for you. But we have actually 10 different dimensions of our being. And the third dimension is our life here in a human body. In this physical body is the third dimension. And the third dimension is how you do your life, right? It's moving your arms and legs, going to work, making things happen, picking up the phone. It's the doingness of life that we do with our physical body. And your physical body can only ever be in this moment right now. And right now, and right now, there is no past other than the exact moment that you're in for your physical body. It can't go back to five years ago. It can't go ahead to the future. It can only be right in this moment. That's your physical human body. That's the third dimension, right? So the three dimensions are height, width, and depth. That defines our third dimension, our, physical, our physicality. The fourth dimension 
is your mind, your thinking. So that's also part of our human experience. But in our mind, you can go all over the place in time. You can go back to kindergarten and remember vacations when you were a kid. You can think about next Christmas and start to do your Christmas shopping now and plan and imagine. You can do that in your fourth dimension, your mind. Your body can't follow you, but your mind can go all over. So, so time exists in the fourth dimension. There is no time in the third dimension. There is only the moment. The fourth dimension is where your ego is. That's where your thoughts are too. So not only is your imagination to go back and forth in time, but also the thoughts of, you better not do that. Your beliefs about yourself. I'm not good enough. No, I'm never going to get another relationship. No, how can I start a new business? I'm too old for that. All of those thoughts, that's in the fourth dimension. The fifth dimension, we're going up. When we hit the fifth dimension is when we start to be more into our spiritual aspect and less of our physical human aspect. So in the fifth dimension is when you are much more present to your intuition. You're much more in tune as you, as you get to your fifth dimension, like trusting that the universe is partnering with you, much more in tune with trusting that things will work out. Whereas in the third dimension, I got to make them work out. I got to work harder. I got to do everything to cause my outcome. I got to think of all the solutions and then I've got to go do them. That's my physical human experience. But we're human beings. So we're human and we're being. The being aspect is the spiritual who are you being while you're doing your human life? Who are you being? Are you being resentful and sad and scared and small? Are you being worried about everybody else? Or are you being open? Are you being trusting? Are you being peaceful? Are you being love? Because really our inherent nature, our true being is love. That's the source that we come from. That is source energy is love. And when we come from love, our spirit, our energy incarnates into now a physical body. So I get this life experience in my physical body. We forget that it's all fine and it's love. And we buy into the fear and the wounding and the having to do and the, the, it's really fear. It's really love or fear, bottom line, right? Love is gonna bring all the things that our spirit inherently knows. Fear is gonna bring all of the things that our human survival drive brings to the forefront. So developing spirituality is being able to transcend that working hard in my life, getting myself exhausted, thinking I'm not good enough, all of the other core beliefs, and transcending that to connect to peace, wisdom, trust, love. So that's my perspective or what I've learned in my training and my learning. How does that land for you? <clears throat> I think it makes complete sense. Oh, okay, okay. All right, good. Because sometimes, you know, you never know where people are at. It's different than religion, to my mind. Religion is the rules about what you should do to get closer to God. So this religion has these rules. This religion has these rules, right? You and I could come up with a new religion tonight and say, these are the rules. But really, when you're connected to your own spirituality, you don't need anybody else's rules. It's the humanness of the fear that thinks somebody else knows the right rules. Certainly, I don't. I better go listen to their rules. 
But when you connect to, we all come from source. Nobody has more access to rules than you do. But we just forgot that. So that's the difference for me as well. So hi, Elizabeth. So um, when you're born, we are just being, right? We just came from source energy. We just came from God. We were only spirit and we came into a human body and we are just being. Like when you're a brand new baby, there's no identity. There's no, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. There's just being. Mm -hmm. There's a human body, arm and legs that are moving, but there's just beingness. There's pure being of wonder, of love and connection, brand new babies, you know, as they start to wake up a little bit in their brain, they just want to connect. All they need is love. That's just pure being. And then the beingness gets covered over by the wounding and the beliefs. So connecting to our spirituality is uncovering the beingness again uncovering that and remembering the truth of who you are the truth of who we all are and when you start to do this kind of work especially as you start to heal your own wounding and you just see everybody else is just doing an expression of their wounding like that's how I see it now um now there is the peace. You don't have to fight back. You don't have to prove your point. You don't have to feel defeated like they won. You don't have to get your last word in. You know who you are and you see them as they're just doing their thing from their wounding. I just got to love them back, which is, I know, easier said than done. <laughs> like, I'm just going to share with you guys. Um, so if you've been following me, you know, I do have any of you seen I do like morning coffee conversations mm -hmm. first thing when I get up like and I purposely look like hell because <laughs> it is mm -hmm. 30 in the morning and I'm having my, my coffee and I was like oh this really works for me I don't have to worry about hair and makeup I'll do this first thing in the morning and I'll make it really obvious anyway so I'm having my coffee and I really am having my coffee and um a couple of people this week and it's so interesting I, I've been doing the topics on these kinds of topics. Sometimes I do other things, but because of this workshop, I'm promoting the workshop, I'm talking about trauma, I'm talking about wounding, right? So a lot of people are commenting and I've gotten like three comments in the last two days of one guy said, you're so rude and you don't, um, how did he say it? Uh, he said, respect your audience. You're so rude with that cup of coffee. Now, before I would have done a lot of this work, I would have been like, <gasps> I can't believe like upset or have to get the last word in or all the things that you might imagine, you know, and there were, I've been doing this online for many years. So there have been times when people have challenged me and I had that exact reaction. But today, and another woman said, like, I, like I'm not a real person, Oh, she's so annoying the way she slurps with that cup in her hand, right? So, so I respond, I'm like, thank you for watching. Like, hello, you know, but um, I can really see it as that's their wounding. Like, I don't need to get plugged in. That did not used to happen. And the one guy, I said something like, um, if it bothers you, you don't have to watch. You could just listen or grab a cup with me. But either way, I hope you have a good day. And then he responded back with, so he, we went back and forth a little bit. If you follow my page, you'll see the whole conversation. But he said something. In the end, he ended up apologizing. And I said, apology accepted. We actually have a lot in common. And I'm so glad that you listened. But like, that's the place you can come from. I don't need to prove myself. I didn't apologize. Like, oh, sorry, did my slurping, of, like it's hot coffee. So I'm like, you know, you slurp when it's hot. So at least I do. So that's an easy, simple little example. But in your life, either you need to prove your point or you're like, they're proving their point. Uh, okay, I'm gonna keep my mouth shut, but I'm mad or the judgment. 
So, I mean, we could we could be on here for three hours tonight with this topic, in my opinion, and it's really part of my favorite part of this work. But when you're doing the kind of work that I'm talking about, that all gets kind of released and you just kind of see people as doing their thing and it's freeing. It's freeing because you don't have to engage. So when we're born, you're just the I am presence and then life starts to happen. And if you were born into a family or an environment of caregivers who have their own wounding, people only have the tools that they have. That's one premise that I have taken on and that I work with my clients on it on looking from is people do the best they can they really do it's just that the best they can sometimes is not too high because of their own wounding so ways that you can get back to your spirituality are really things that in our culture, we've sort of lost sight of because of our modern Western culture. But if you look at indigenous people or just people who live really simply connecting to nature, there is an inherent wisdom in nature and God, when he made the world and created, so God is the creator, right? When God created, we got creator energy. That's part of who we are and when God created the world he created it very purposefully he knew what he was doing right so the trees give off oxygen which we need and the trees absorb carbon dioxide which we give off that's just like one tiny tiny example of how nature is so purposefully and magnificently put together right so being in nature brings your body physically back to a state of peace. There's a polarity in the earth that will absorb the ions from computers and cell phones and microwave ovens and all of that, which disrupts our energetic balance. So I'm gonna, we're gonna be talking about energy too in just a second, but the earth will actually absorb that and help change that and bring the polarity back into your physical body. So nature, is one way sound this is now going to relate to the energy in our body so we look like we're three-dimensional solid mass right einstein proved and current science technologies are continuing to prove at a deeper and deeper level actually there's very little of us that's solid it's all energy it's all just an energy frequency if you looked at an atomic level like at an atom you would see because now they have the technology to blow up so you can actually see an atom, you would see a tiny, tiny, tiny dot with a lot of space around it. And that little dot is always moving. And then how it's moving is the frequency. So at an atomic level, we are mostly energy. We feel solid because that little dot part bumps up against the borders and so you feel the rim, but what's really inside mostly is energy. And the energetic frequency of our physical body comes from energy, the energy field. That's also to me, I don't know what you guys think about this, but when I think of like how people fight over, is it the Bible or is it Big Bang? Well, maybe God did it with the Big Bang. <laughs> like maybe that's how he did it, you know? So there's this energy, I don't know, but there's this energy field that we come from and we need life force energy in order to be alive. If you didn't have energy running through you, which we get from the sun and we get from that source energy, life would be over. The sun is a big part of the energy field as well for the physical body. So, um, so there's an energetic field in all parts of our body. And I'm going to link this now back to yesterday. Every organ, every system of your body has an energetic frequency unique to that system. Every emotion that you feel has an energy frequency to it. So there's, um, I should have thought to bring it up. You know what, when, when I send this email out, 
I'm going to attach, besides the replay, I'm gonna attach a chart for you so you can see what I mean now. I just didn't think to pull it up. So there's a, a, an emotional frequency chart. And that chart shows emotions and what the energy frequency is of those emotions. The bottom, and the bottom emotion is shame. That is the lowest. And that has an emotional frequency or an energetic frequency of 20. Now, even a dead body, once we die, decomposing, it takes energy to decompose a body, right? So a decomposing dead body is somewhere close to 20, which means people walking around holding shame about who they are, holding shame about what's happened in their life, are like the walking dead. I'm just gonna put it that way, right? That's the energy frequency that you hold in your body. From shame, we go to guilt, we go to resentment, we go to grief, sadness. I, I don't, I'm not remembering the order exactly, but those lower frequencies are the frequencies of victimhood, the frequencies of wounding and trauma, as you go up, when you get to the higher ones, which is where Jesus lived and other really enlightened people, the highest is an energetic frequency of 700. So we go from shame to 700, 20 to 700. It's called emotional frequency. This is, this is David Hawkins. He really pioneered this. He has passed away. He was an English psychologist. He has several books out. Um, Letting Go is one book. They're pretty thick and they're not easy reading, not hard, but not easy. But he has a really great chart of that. So when we're looking at the beliefs, the core wounding and the beliefs, and now we look at this chart and we see what, where our emotions are, then you can see spiritually where you're at. Because if you're in shame and guilt and sadness and grief and resentment and anger, there's a long way to go to joy and peace and love. So we have to release those emotions. That's part of reconnecting to our spirituality is getting rid of those emotions that hold us. So definitely I promise to attach that chart to the email. Okay, so you can see this. I'm sorry, I didn't think to pull it up for you guys. Um, okay, any questions on that? No? Have you ever heard of an emotional frequency chart before? Is this totally new? I haven't. Oh, good. Well, Devery is, uh, we're gonna be doing more work on that. So you'll, you'll get a lot more work on that. But it's, um, remember, emotions, emotion, energy in motion. When we don't move the energy, something happens to us and we're told you better not cry you better stop it right now. And we, whoop. where does that energy go? It has to go somewhere. You know, from high school biology or physics or whatever, energy never, you can't kill it. It doesn't destruct. It just changes form, right? An oak tree is a seed. Then it goes into a tree. Then it dies, drops more seeds that, you know, and there's just a constant going. The energy just changes form it doesn't ever really get destroyed. So the energy in motion, the emotions that we held in, that we don't express, that energy has to go somewhere. That's going to disrupt when we hold it in the body, it will disrupt the regular frequencies of our, our organs and our systems and our tissues. There's a frequency that's supposed to be there. Now we have anger. Now we have shame, now we have fear, especially fear, because if you're in a life where you're fearful every day, you know, it's one thing to have the anger that's been in there. They're equally damaging in my opinion, but you've got the stuff that's been in there since you were five and you've got the stuff every day where you go, oh my God, what's gonna happen today? What if, look at, look at the political landscape, look at global warming, look at the job situation. I mean, you can, make yourself fearful every single day. And what it does is it puts you in that 
frequency. The spiritual work that I do with my clients, when we were on the last night, on last night's call, those ladies that started coming in at the end, that particular call is a spiritual group. They've done core work with me and now we're doing deeper spiritual work. Um, but really looking at if I'm going to be afraid, like let's just say I watch the news and I'm afraid with what I see on the news, you can never be afraid enough to make a difference. The fear is not gonna make a difference. Your fear is just gonna put you in the same frequency as the polarizing human survival that's going on. The love, love frequency will transcend and will help counterbalance that. We're gonna do something tonight called a healing code together as a healing tool. And I'll explain that a little bit more. But participating in those things from a place of fear just has you be part of that frequency. Did, am I making sense? Yeah. Okay. So back to a brand new baby. We come into this life, we are pure being. We are certain of who we are. We don't have an identity yet, but our soul knows who we are. And I think it's uh, up until the age of four, there's lots of studies, there's books on it where children like see God. There was, oh, where did I, this was in a book that I read, especially when my daughter died. But honestly, in my twenties, I was interested in this stuff. I have always been reading this stuff. It's always called to me. And then obviously a lot more in more recent years. But one of the books that I was reading, they shared a story of, um, oh, it might even have been in the healing codes, which I put as a reference for you in the email. This uh, family had a brand new baby. So I think they had a three-year-old daughter, three or four, and a brand new baby. And they had the monitor in the, in the baby's room and they were listening and they heard the little girl say to the brand new baby, you've got to tell me, remind me of God because I'm forgetting. I'm starting to forget. She's saying to her little brother, sister, I can't remember, with no adults in the room. And it was an example, but there's a lot of them. When children will say stories or say things, they're just like, where are they even getting this from, right? Where are they getting this from? But it's a remembrance. As time goes on, we forget. But it's a remembrance of where we came from. It's a remembrance of our true nature, which is source energy, which really is love. Bottom line. I used to really see all the stuff around love is love is the answer love cures it all and i like here got it i'd be like yeah 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 yeah. you know i'm scared to death about everything <laughs> you know what i mean like i i got it but i didn't get it when you really get it it is the answer it is the thing that we need to get back to and remember it is the core of our spirituality it's just our beliefs and our wounding that's covered it over. And you can use your trauma, you can use the wounds as a portal, for lack of a better word, a stepping stone, a catalyst, the thing that propels you into the deepest knowledge of love that you've ever known. It requires letting go of the core beliefs. It requires letting go of the identity that you created. I'm a victim. Life is scary. You've got to let go of that. But if you're willing to, the, the contrast of living in wounding and fear to living in love and healed and remembrance, like that little girl, I, gotta, I want to remember where I came from. That's really our soul's whole mission is to remember the truth of who we are. That's it. Come here, have a life experience and remember the truth, which is you are, come from the creator. You are love, you are source energy. And then if we all do that, we're walking each other home. We're just walking each other home. 
But if we're not remembering that, then we're fighting each other the whole way for what we think is what we can get or what we don't even believe we deserve or any of that. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I had one other thought that I wanted to say to you guys. Oh, the subconscious. Remember I said, remind me. <laughs> so the subconscious, so you have your conscious mind, which is what am I going to eat for dinner? Am I going to be on the workshop tonight? Am I going to go take a shower? All those conscious thoughts, the things that you have, that's maybe 5% of what your mind is doing is conscious. 95% is subconscious. It's in the background. It's the thing where you say, maybe I'll, maybe I'll call so-and-so and your subconscious says, oh, don't do that. They don't, you know, they don't really like you anyway. You're, you're not conscious of that thought, but that's in the background where you go, yeah, maybe I won't. So the subconscious beliefs that we hold are 95% of what drives us. So that's why you can say, I'm gonna go on a diet. I'm gonna go on a diet and I'm going to follow this diet. I'm gonna lose 10 pounds. And so every day you have your conscious choices. I'm gonna eat this salad. I'm going to exercise, do whatever you're gonna do. But then five days in or two days in, whatever it is, or or a month in, you're, you're like not sticking with it. And you're like, oh, there I go again. Why is that? Because your subconscious beliefs about how consistently in the past you ever succeeded or eh, why, you know, I'm really not going to succeed. My body type really isn't meant to be skinny. All of the subconscious beliefs start to kick in at some point and they will always override your conscious beliefs, always. That's a much stronger pull. So when your conscious beliefs and or thoughts and your subconscious are not in alignment, that's when we experience a lot of pull, a lot of discord, a lot of lack, because we go then with the subconscious beliefs, which are most of the time limiting, defeating, negative, because they came from our original wounding. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so I, I wanted to point that out back at the beginning, um, but understanding that your subconscious is there and it's also, I think last night we spoke a little bit about the spiritual heart and Amy, you asked me like about that. So your spiritual heart is, or maybe that was in the second call. I can't remember. Anyway, the spiritual heart is in your heart center, right? And that's where your memories reside. That's where your subconscious programming resides and it's also where the true essence of you resides so it's all kind of there and it's a matter of which are you connecting to to put it in a you know in an easy way to understand that's the way that I sort of understand it as I go through so what we want to do is transcend the limiting negative beliefs and get to the truth so what I'd love to do is a healing exercise going back to energy now, when we understand that at a cellular level, an atomic level, at the most basic level, what we are is energy. Even inanimate things, everything is energy. Einstein, E equals MC squared, right? E is energy equals, remember in math, anything on two sides of an equal sign means they're equal to each other, right? Energy is on one side. That's everything on this side equals mc squared. Mass times the speed of light. That's what mc squared is. c squared is the speed of light. m is mass. Energy equals mass times the speed of light. Energy is everything. It's our mass times how fast the energy is moving, how the, the speed of light in a cellular level. So when you start to understand that, you can learn how to move energy through your body. 
the, the work that I do with my clients includes clearing of emotions. We clear it. And there's different ways to do that. But you can also use your own self to move energy. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your hands right now and hold your hands about this far apart from each other. And just start to, don't touch them, but just start to go like this. Do you have a feeling like you could feel something invisible between your hands? Can you guys feel that? Like you're squeezing something? Yes. Yeah. If you don't, rub them together, create some friction, and then do it. Okay. Keep them about two or three inches. And now just, do you feel it? Yeah. Once you feel it, start to roll it. Can you feel it rolling? It almost feels like you have a ball, right? And you're rolling a ball, you're not touching. Teresa, you got it? Okay, that's energy. Our hands have a lot of energy to them and you can move energy with your hands. Energy is a lot like water in my mind, the way I understand it, right? Energy is everywhere and it flows. Life force energy comes into us and we need it. It's also the way that we interact with source is through our energy field. The emotions that we hold is what's giving information to the energy field. If my emotions are fear and sadness and shame and guilt, that's the information. That's what I am connecting to. Mm -hmm. But I can use my hands. So I'm going to teach you this is a universal healing code. So healing codes, I gave you that as a book. Dr. Alex Lloyd and Dr. Ben Johnson wrote that book together. I became a healing codes coach several years ago. Somebody sent me to another guy who was doing healing. I was struggling with my thyroid and my autoimmunity. We're going to go into it in one second. I want to give you the background. And this guy took he had me take a selfie with my cell phone and say into my microphone on my phone my name is linda that's all i did my name is linda and i took a picture and i sent it to him i never met him i still have never met him it was a favor from somebody a colleague of mine was like oh you got to check out what this guy's doing so he sends me back an email with a full report this is technology that nasa is actually using now and energy technology that this guy uses for health. He didn't know anything about me. He knew my name is Linda and he had a screenshot. He sends me back this report. You have issues with autoimmunity. There's a lot of anger because the technology can see the energy field. That's why now we have the technology hmm. to marry wow. with the spirituality. So he's, so he's sending all this stuff back. He has no idea. My daughter was still alive at the time, but he has no idea. My husband had been having an affair. It's been 15 years that she's been in the hospital. I had an alcoholic childhood. He has no idea of any of that, but he's rolling back out autoimmunity, grief, sadness, anger. So he gives me the report and he says, honestly, I can't tell you how. I just know this is the technology NASA is using it. They're really studying. They're getting very interested in energy as the next frontier of understanding. Mm -hmm. he, and then that weekend, he sent me a text, not an email, but a text, because I had to send them through my cell phone, right? My, my, uh, I, that's how I did my voice thing. And he said, listen, I've been thinking of you. You may want to check out healing codes. I had never heard of it before. He was, mm -hmm. you may want to check out healing codes. And you need to do some frequencies, some sound frequencies. Oh, I've started to bring that up before. The energy moving gets disrupted by sound. And there's different frequencies for different things. So he said to me, the sound frequencies for you are for negative thoughts. So it's sophragio frequencies. You could look this up. For me, it was 417. That was the frequency. Five, I knew about the sound frequencies because we would play them for Charlotte in the hospital. We would play 528, which is the frequency for health and love. He said to me, you need 417, <laughs> which is negative beliefs because he didn't say this, but basically in the unwritten was sister, you're a mess. <laughs> <laughs> and I took it on like nobody's business. 
I played that every night before I went to bed. I woke up to it. I played it while I was cooking. I did everything else he told me. I got healing codes. By the time I read the book in one weekend, and it's all of the medical um, correlation with energy medicine. The following week after I finished that book, I got in touch with healing codes. I hired a coach. She worked with me for eight months on healing codes for me. Then I was like, I want to become a healing codes coach. And I went into their coaching program. And now I'm a level two healing codes coach. That's part of the work that we'll do. But I want to give you tonight a healing codes, which is a universal code. So we're going to, I'm going to show you where to put your hands to move energy through your body, particularly at points in your nervous system. So the nervous system is the fight or flight, right? It's the brain, the nervous system, the adrenals um, are telling the brain or the brain's telling the adrenals pump out cortisol. And people who are constantly fearful, anxious, or depressed is a dysregulated nervous system. So we're gonna move the energy. And what you're gonna do, just like we felt the energy here, you're gonna point your hands so they're like pointers. And you're not gonna to touch your body, you're gonna leave it pretty close, like you know that far of a distance because you're creating an arc for the energy to move. So here's the four points. The first one is going to be between your eyebrows. It's called the bridge. So you're gonna point between your eyebrows. Position two is the Adam's apple. I'll tell you what these positions correlate to in the body, but Adam's apple. Position three is the bend of your jaw right out here. Position four is the temples. So position one is the pituitary gland, which is the gland that regulates all of the rest of the endocrine system, tells the thyroid, tells the thymus, you know, tells the pancreas, the adrenals, and the ovaries and the gonads. The pituitary gland is that. That's right here. Also the pineal gland. The pineal gland is further back in the head. The pineal gland is the gland that actually receives information from source. So in civilizations, there's hieroglyphics in Egyptian caves that show the shape of the pineal gland. All kinds of civilizations have recognized that. So we're sending energy. The pineal gland is also where melatonin is produced, which is when you sleep. When you sleep is when you get restored. When you sleep is when you get your supply of life force energy. There's a connection. People who don't sleep well, right? It's a problem. Melatonin is in the pineal gland. So we're stimulating the pituitary and the pineal. Adam's apple is the thyroid. And also going back through the neck, all of the nerves that are coming down from the base of the skull. So we're, we're sending energy, we're, we're moving energy with our hands. Here, the vagus nerve comes down from the brain, goes behind the ear. It's the longest, well, the sciatic nerve is longer, but it's the, it's the main vein of the nervous system in terms of peace and rest is the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve can get turned off when we're constantly upset and afraid. So you wanna stimulate the vagus nerve. It comes down, it goes through all the major organs and it lands in the gut. That's also not a coincidence, right? Your gut intuition, mm -hmm. the gut brain connection. What's one of the first signs when things are a problem is gut issues. Starts off, I'm bloated, I'm constipated, I whatever, next thing you know, three years from now, you got the next thing. Vagus nerve ends in the gut. So it comes down here. So you can stimulate your vagus nerve like this, but when we're pointing, that's what we're doing is we're sending energy. Remember, energy never is destroyed. We're telling it where to go and how to move. Just like water, water's gonna flow wherever. You put a dam, the water hits the dam and it goes that way. You make a, something lower, the water goes to the lowest point. Energy's gonna move. So we're moving it with our hands. And then the temp is the right and left side of the brain. When you're in fear and upset, the back of the brain, the amygdala is taking over. And the front of the brain, which is the problem solving, and when you're at peace and rest, you're here, gets hijacked, and we're in fight or flight back here. 
So we're now stimulating right and left sides of the brain, okay? I'll tell you where to move your hands. And what we're gonna do is, I want you to think of an issue in your life right now that you would like to address. Anything, you don't have to say it out loud, but you're gonna think of an issue and when you think of that issue, like you could, maybe it's money issues, or maybe it's you just got a health diagnosis, or maybe you're divorced and you're fearful or something. When you think of that issue, I want you to think of what emotions come up with, to, with that. So let's just say, let's just say it's a health issue. Just got a diagnosis. I have this health issue. When I think of that, what emotions? come up. I'm, af I'm afraid. I'm, um, I feel betrayed, like my body betrayed me. I feel uh, insecure and uncertain. I feel resentful that I have this issue and other people don't, right? Whatever it is, I'm just giving you examples. Mm -hmm. And then I want you to rate, what's the impact of that on my life right now? whatever your issue is. So on a scale of zero to 10, when I'm having those emotions, what are, where am I, at, am I at? Maybe it's an eight or a nine or a 10, whatever. And remember your number, because we're gonna, at the end, see if we shift that number at all. The next thing I want you to do is remember an earlier time in your life when you had those same emotions. Maybe it wasn't because of a health issue, Maybe somebody did something to you and you felt betrayed, you were resentful, you were afraid, whatever it is, right? But you had similar emotions come up. So take a moment, see if you can think of an earlier time in your life. If you can't, don't worry about it. The point is when you have current issues with those emotions, your subconscious is mapping it onto, it's your data bank. Your subconscious has all your memories, all your cellular data, and your subconscious is going, oh, this reminds me of that when I felt that way. So we're, you know, we're just connecting that so we can heal. We are gonna work on healing all of it. Okay, what we're gonna do is now, I'm gonna ask you to shut off your cameras. I'm gonna shut off mine. I'm gonna talk you through it when I tell you. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're using love and God God and the frequency of love to heal the frequency of the emotions that you're experiencing with this issue. So it's, um, so let's just say fear, right? So fear is whatever the frequency is. When we pull love into our body as best as you can, love into our consciousness, the love is going to map on top of the fear frequency. And when we do it enough, I'm not saying one shot tonight is gonna to solve the world's problems, but when you do that enough, you flatline the energy frequency. You don't, it's not like you take away the memory or the experience. It just, you heal it with the frequency of love. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we're gonna do when I say shut off our cameras, I'm gonna have it be part of the recording so you can listen again if you want to, and you can do this. I'm gonna actually recommend that you do do it um, two, two times a day for several days. See, see how it goes. See if you start to shift in how you perceive the issue. Because the, remember, the very one of the first things I said is, spirituality is having a peace and a knowing in the face of whatever's happening in the face of so hmm. it's not like we're changing the diagnosis or the circumstance what we're changing is your body's response to it and how you see it and energetically bringing love back in so that you remember who you've got on your side okay so I'm going to, I'm going to do a prayer. It's a prayer and a request for God's healing on this particular issue. So in your head, you'll say whatever your issue is. I'll just say this issue when I say the prayer. And then I'm going to tell you to move your hands. We hold them in those positions for about 30 seconds. You want to stay long enough to get the energy to move, right? We don't go because it's not enough time. You don't have to time it, but you want to try to stay for like 30 seconds and we're going to go through it 
three times, three full rounds. That's the minimum. When I do custom codes for people, which is what I'm giving away as a bonus for coming, remember I said I would have some bonus gifts for people. I'm going to let you know, I'll send you an email and I'll do, we'll do a call and I'll do a custom code, which is some other sites, not only these four, this is a universal because mm -hmm. it hits the main things in the nervous system, but a custom code might be do it for 10 days or two weeks or do it for this amount of time. A universal code is like a basic generic code and it's three times through and twice a day, okay? Yep. So when you're ready, um, I want you to just, we're gonna stop our video. Hopefully this is not the time when the dogs bark, but you never know, it's just part of it, right? Um, Eileen, do you want to stop your video? There you yeah, go. Yeah, sorry. No, no we're worries. Just, just... We're putting our fans near these. We're not actually touching, right? Right. You're going to do a little bit okay. of a space, like maybe, I don't know, an inch, because you okay. want to create an arc, like an electric arc, you know, mm -hmm. sort of like a circuit. And just remember the, you know, when we just did our hands, that's what we're doing. So before we get started, we want to really get present to love because love is the frequency that heals. Love is the thing that we return home to. So I want you to think of an experience when you felt loved, maybe someone's face that you love. It might be Jesus or, you know, your image of God or Mother Teresa, something. This is my image of love. I imagine myself sitting in Jesus' lap and he's big, not as big as the Lincoln Memorial, but big, like bigger than me. And I'm in his lap and both of my children are in my lap and they're little, they're both little. And I look down at them. I feel the love in my heart for them. I look up and Jesus is looking down at me and I feel love from him. And I just can create a circuit or a cycle of love, God, Jesus, whatever, to me, to my children, they're looking up at me. And that's the image that I always do when I do a healing code. So giving you just a couple of seconds, a minute to get the frequency into your body of love. I want you to put your hands on your heart and rest into this healing session right now. So you're gonna take a deep breath in you're going to exhale out and let your body relax into the chair that you're sitting in. And again, a deep breath in, pulling in your vision of love, whatever that is, and resting into that frequency and that image in your mind. And as you do another couple of breaths at your own pace, I want you to start to imagine seeing like a glow of light coming out from the center of your chest. So just in your mind's eye, your eyes are closed, see like a light building. The light of your own love at the center of your chest coming through and starting to light up. And as you just continue to be in your frequency of love, this prayer of request, Heavenly Father, Infinite Spirit, that you would take any negative beliefs, any cellular memories, any misinterpretations that I hold in my body and in my memory and in my spirit that are related to this particular issue in my life right now, anything that is known that I'm, I'm aware of and everything that is unknown, that is stored in my memory that I am not aware of, that you would release that, open it up, heal it with your light and your love. And that the power of this light and love heals me a hundred times more than I could ever imagine. Amen. You're going to go to position one. You can let your elbows rest or put a pillows under your arms if you want to. Take your hands in that pointer position between your eyebrows. That's the bridge. 
and just hold it there and you're just gonna keep focusing on love. If you want to, you can imagine like a movie screen in your mind's eye and put whatever is your issue on the screen and then see like a spotlight of light and love shining on that issue. If you want to, you don't have to, but just hold and be in the presence of love. I choose father to allow your light and love to move through me. I choose to receive the healing of love and I choose to be in that frequency as you bring healing and light and love to me. Move your hands to position two, pointing to your Adam's apple. Who I am is made of God's love and light and who I am in my true nature is whole, is love, is peace. I am choosing to return myself to who I am. With each step of the way and your light and love guiding me, my journey back to who I am is on its way. And I feel the joy of taking the steps in that journey. Take your hands to outside of your jaw. In every relationship that I have, every communication, I can be the one who brings the light and brings the love. In every situation in my life, I can choose to stand and trust in light and love. And I can remember that that is always available to me. Go outside your temples. I choose to release the fear. I choose to release the struggle. I choose forgiveness for myself and for anyone else where I've held anything other than love I can choose to release it when I'm ready. With your light and love, Father, I can do that now. Go back to the bridge, first position. Anywhere in my mother's side of the family, anywhere that my mother, her parents, and their parents going back as far back as necessary, where the messaging of fear, the messaging of unworthiness, the messaging of not being lovable anywhere that that was passed down to me. With grace and compassion, I release it. I hand it back. I'm grateful for the learning. I'm grateful for the family support and I'm not going to hold any messaging that doesn't serve my highest and best self. I give it back now with love and compassion. Next position, your jaws. Anywhere on my father's side of the family, anywhere that pain was passed on from generation to generation, anywhere that I received the messaging that limited me, that kept me from my true self, that blocked me from seeing the love that I am. With love and compassion for all of those that came before me, I release the messaging now and choose not to hold it anymore. Move to the fourth position, your temples. I can be who I want to be and who I was born to be. I can be the person that God sees me to be. And when I don't, it is only my own beliefs that are blocking me. Back to the first position at your bridge. And 
anywhere that I stopped trusting in my life and in source and in God, I'm going to bring the trust back. Anywhere that I took away my power, I'm going to restore it. Anywhere that I need healing, I'm going to bring the healing by allowing God's light and love to shine in that area. Adam's apple. As long as there is breath in my body, I can be the love and the whole person that I was meant to be. When I feel fear, I can turn to love. When I feel anger, I can choose forgiveness. When I feel shame, I can choose compassion. I accept God's grace and light and love to help me and allow me to do all of that. To your jaw, outside your jaw, As I breathe and relax, I allow the energy of the pain and the grief and the wounding to move. I allow the light and the love to come in. I can see the light and the love coming in to every cell in my body, any place that needs healing, any place that my system has not been working because of my own blocks and my own fears and my own anger, that I can turn those cells into the light and the love and allow them to work again. Outside your temples. It is my choice to live my best life and it is my choice to ask God's light and love to guide me. As I look, each step of my way is lit up. I just have to follow the light. Bring your hands to your heart. With gratitude and peace, I accept this healing. With trust, I turn into the light and the love. And with joy, I call in God's light and love as often as I need it. And remember that it's always there inside of me. Amen. <coughs> Come on back. If you want to, you don't have to. So what you would do, how was that? Does anybody want to share how that was for them? You don't have to. What I'd love for you to do is notice the number that you picked when we started. Remember I said, pick a number for whatever this issue is. Look again, if you're thinking about that issue, what number would you pick now? And has there been any change? So if 10 was the worst, maybe you were a seven or an eight or a nine, I don't know. Is there a change in your number now? Anybody? Yeah? Debbie, where did you start? What was your number when you started? You don't have to say the issue, but what was your number? Unless 10. You were... 10. And where is it at now? Six or seven. Okay. That's pretty good for like 11 minutes of your day, right? So what I'm gonna invite you to do is take this recording. You can fast forward to the timestamp. When we started, it was probably like an hour in or so, a little bit over an hour in. Mm -hmm. And you can just, if you liked it, I, I had no script. I made up whatever popped into my head. So it's not like those are magic words. I just was trying to think of what could be generic that could work for everyone. Right. When I do a custom one with people, it's it's geared towards a specific thing. So this those were just generic words. You could you don't have to listen to it.
but the universal code is those positions. And I think I might've forgotten one, one time through, I'm not sure, but <laughs> it's fine, right? So you're gonna do those four positions. The statements are called truth statements because they're trying to get you to believe the truth rather than the lies about yourself. So you want them to feel true, which is why mm. I used often, I choose. Because if you say something like, I am healed, nothing wrong with that. But if you don't really believe it, it can be stressful. You can be like, yeah, but I'm not, right? But if you say, I choose to allow healing, I choose to turn towards the light, that leaves room for you're in the process and it can feel believable in your body. You know what I mean? And that's important. So if you listen to me or you do your own and you don't have to do any words at all, you can just go through and hold the concept of love because that's the frequency. We're trying to map that frequency onto the frequency of the other emotions to flatline them over time. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, um, oh, this, this, the movie screen, that's also a technique. You don't have to do it, but if that works for you visually, you could picture like a screen with your issue on it with light shining on it, light and love. And then just don't try to make anything happen, but just see if that changes. You know, sometimes people say it like melted or it just disappeared or something, hmm. right? So any questions on that? It's a lot to take in at once, but. It's a lot to take in at once? Yeah. These I mean, I'd, days, you mean? I'd, or like to, I'd like to read more about, about them. The healing codes? Yeah, I'm just saying I'd like to remember everything. <laughs> Well, when I say a lot to take in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's why I record it. And that's why this month in particular was three parts because I felt like, I mean, I could have just done one part, but I kind of wanted the whole picture and it is a lot. And that's why I didn't do it all in one night because by the time, you know, you just kind of tune out. So I broke it up and that's why it's recorded. So you can listen again. And Deborah, you know, you have access to me whenever you want. Yeah. Um, and it is a lot and you know I'm going to invite you if you feel like you want to do more work this is the work that I do I it is a lot I've done a lot work for myself and a lot of education to try to pull it all together all of the parts of it the belief parts the neuro the you know the neuro anatomy the energy and that's what I do so for people who have been on the workshops. Uh, so a couple of things. Number one, I'll be letting you know if, um, you know, who won, whatever, I'm going to just pick somebody to do a custom thing like that, that for you as a gift. I also can do that with you if anybody else wants to do it in terms of like, the, you just want to do a session. I do do just sessions with people and you could reach mm -hmm. out to me if you want just like a healing code session or something like that. And also the three month program that I do is three months intensive work on all of it. We move through it together. We're on calls twice a week. So there's a lot of contact. Um, and then after that, when people are done with that, they actually go into like a, a monthly group call that I have with my, I call them alumni, but we stay working together. And there's that's a free thing as just part of having been a client. So if you're interested in that, there is, um, you know, as I said, there's enrollment happening for that right now. I put that in the email and there is an incentive to be able to do that at um, a $500 discount. So that's, I think, a significant thing if it feels like something that you want to do. So just reach out to me. We start mm -hmm. next week. So you want to definitely think about that. And if I can answer any questions, send me an email and we can get on the phone. And I can answer questions about that for you. But is there anything else with the content that we covered that you want to, while, while we're here, ask a question about? I really thank you for your time mm. and for coming. Well, thank I hope it was thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I hope it was valuable. I hope you put some pieces together for your life. I hope that, you know, especially this 
healing code will give you a tool and you've got some other resources and then you've always got me if you want to ever ask me any questions okay yeah it was great Linda. really it's fascinating yeah. Thank you. I don't know if you feel calmer now. Good. Awesome. Yeah. So you do that twice a day, you know, and it really, really will work on there's a, so, you know, the healing codes. Um, I just did a three month healing code course. I had probably eight or nine people in that and it was just healing codes. And we looked at 12 different categories of life, love, trust, patience, um, goodness, kindness, unhealthy beliefs. There were 12 different categories and there are specific codes for each category. And we looked at where are the wounding in our life in relationship to those specific categories. And then we did codes for that. So there's a lot more with healing codes. I just gave you a really basic one. Um, and so, and then there's also a custom code, like what's your specific issue. So there's the 12 categories and then there's also your own issue. So there's a lot you can do with healing codes, but they're very powerful. Yeah. Is this the anything like when they do the healing touch? So heal you know, it's, that um, thanks, Masara. Thank you for your comment. Um, yeah, you know, it's what Jesus did. When Jesus laid his hands on people, he used his energy to move energy. Yeah. And the, the other part of that was the receiver believed enough because that's the it's your uh, it's your thoughts and emotions right so the people who were receiving healing from jesus believe that's why they traveled for days to get in, in front of him and all of that mm -hmm. there's a story of um you know the story in the bible when jesus healed the blind guy the guy who was born yeah. since his birth yeah and he says to him afterwards you're, you know, the guy says, I was blind, but now I see. And Jesus says to him, go now and sin no more. The word for sin back in ancient Hebrew actually didn't mean what it means today, what we think of. So when we think of sin, we think of you broke the rules, right? Like there's rules and you yeah. sin, you broke them. In ancient Hebrew, what Jesus would have used to say that was actually meant like miss your mark so if you're like thinking of an archer miss your uh -huh. mark go now and stop missing the mark stop believing the lies stop believing you're not worthy you're not lovable start having faith because if you believe then this healing that we did will work but basically what jesus was saying is if you go back to believing and thinking what you did before you're going to be blind again go now and stop doing that keep thinking the way that you are now mm -hmm. and keep seeing thank you yeah you're welcome so that's what that's the answer to that yeah yeah moving of the so there's lots of different energy things. I like doing moving the energy with the love frequency and with like asking God to be part of it. Mm. I, I think that that's a really special and effective way to put a couple of tools together, prayer right. and energy. Okay, so All I right. will get this out. I will attach the chart with the emotion things mm -hmm. to it so that you can, the chart that has all the emotional frequencies. So you can actually see that. And please hey, feel free to, yeah, yeah. How long is how long are the recordings available to relook at? Of these? Of our three nights. Forever. Uh, they're they're a link and I put them up on my YouTube channel and you'll just keep them. You keep the email, you'll have the link. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna take it away. I know people do that. Probably from a marketing perspective, I should do that, but I don't. Um but I am offering, you know, to, to have a, an opportunity, if you want to do more work as a client, that's like kind of a specific time frame. Okay. And feel free to share if you want, if there's people in your life that you want to like, oh, he, I think this, you'd find this interesting. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. When Thanks. does the program start next week? When does it start? Mm hmm Monday, but you don't have to, it's also recorded. So I'll be taking enrollments for the next week into the following week. Then once it gets much further into that, there's a lot for people to catch up on. But I always have people who kind of like roll in last minute or after the first night or whatever, but it starts on Monday. Monday and Wednesday are the calls. What time? Seven. 
Okay. So we it's and they're recorded. If you can't be there every every week, both nights, you get them. But it's a coaching call. There's also a whole portal, a client portal with modules um, that you get. And again, you get to keep all of that. You have access to all of that forever. It doesn't go right. away at the end of the 12 weeks. I'm a heart math practitioner. Did I, did I talk about heart math? Maybe yesterday I did. Yeah. So I'm also a heart math practitioner. So there's modules in there with heart math tools um, and then other things and then the coaching calls. So it's it's all of that for 12 weeks. And then the ongoing alumni access once a month. Okay. Thank you. I would love to see you. I would love to see you. Thank you Thank very you. much. Okay. Have a great weekend. You too. Have a good weekend. Thank Bye. you. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.